It's an amazing thing that the development of interpersonal relationships between men and women are not so organic as we think they should be. Um, so I wanted to discuss something that men need from women that they are going to be long term with, right? Obviously, a man can pretty much look at you and tell whether or not he's like, oh, I'm going to make that my wife. But normally, you know, that will take him a couple of months to confirm. So he'll believe that and then, you know, look at you for a couple of months to confirm that, right? A man does not need a year. He does not need five years. If you've been in some kind of an 11-year relationship with a guy who's never married you, he doesn't want to. You're a placeholder, okay? Men know from first sight to two weeks whether or not they want to marry you. And they look to confirm those things over the next, like, three to six months okay um and also if it's a guy who struggles with titles girl run run for the hills it's it's going to be nasty and you can expect other women to be involved the whole reason that there's not a title or he doesn't want oh i don't like titles is so that he can do whatever he wants and then you have to be loyal and decent and and all that other stuff anyhow what I wanted to say was one of the most important things that a man needs from you is to believe in him. So if you do not believe in the man that you are with now, he will replace you. He will never, you know, men are very sensitive more so than we give them credit for. It's the reason why women can get their heart broken again and again and again and still believe in love whereas a guy will remember you know the girl in seventh grade who laughed at him and said she didn't like him and now he's you know this player like fragilita okay (laughs) so um they need to know that you believe in them and that you have faith in them and what they do that um you feel comfortable relying on them, believing in the beauty of their dreams, believing in their consistency, believing in their will to achieve, to manifest the things that they've planned. Um, I know, um, what is it? Kev on stage and Melissa have this story of where, you know, uh, Kev got fired from a pink (laughs) and, um, that wasn't funny. But he recently visited the bank uh, as he was doing a tour, tour in Seattle. And, you know, he could he could buy that bank, you know. Um, so he got fired from a bank and Melissa was the only one working. And then um, he was afraid she didn't believe in him. And I don't know if they were in marital counseling or what. But she was just like, no, no, no. I never said I didn't believe in you. I just said that b- basically they had to get their ducks in a row. So, you know. They've both got jobs at Boeing and then saved up enough to just trust in his career, like to step out on faith that way. And of course, the reward is that, you know, you can go look at Kev on stage, you can go record in, you know, his studios and on his sound stages and rent them out. And he's been on, you know, what is it called? The 85 South show. I can't believe I just went blank. I literally just got done watching T-Pain on that show. But like do you see how like like he couldn't replace melissa if he tried he wouldn't be who he is if she talked him out of his dreams right so when you see him talk about his wife and brag on his wife and block women from his dms and things like this like there are things that she has done for him that are so important that like he he will die with those things she's like imprinted herself onto his heart and onto his mind she'll never go anywhere I mean, even if she wanted to leave him, you would you would only ever be second best. Like you would be horrible. You you would feel horrible being, you know, if they were divorced and you were just Kev on stage's girlfriend, you know, wow the billah. Uh that's um a little Arabic. Basically I'm saying I'm not wishing any of that of uh, on them. I'm just saying like the imprint is, you know, she believed in me. They believed in me when nobody else did. 
Um, there's a story about, you know, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu and his very first wife. Um, people like, like to talk about him and um, one of his younger wives, but actually the first woman he married was about 15 years older than him and, you know, had children from a couple of different marriages. And on top of that, um, he was a virgin. Um, she was wealthy. She hired him. But basically, she was the very first Muslim, right? Khadija bint Khuwailid, right? A woman of the Quraysh, right? That's a Arab tribe that had a lot of clout at the time. You know, some places are very uh, tribal and uh, clanistic. <laughs> and uh, Arabs are that way, right? Your family name matters. So she was one of these really noble women, blah, blah, blah. She had everything, the beauty, the wealth, the experience. Um, but basically, he was getting these dreams and things were happening with him. And he was just like, I don't know what's going on, this and this. And um, he was basically learning that he was a prophet. He was being visited by the angel Gabriel. And I mean, if you get visited by an angel right now, you're going to be like, all right, lock me up, straight jacket, padded wagon. Uh, I'm cuckoo, you know. Maybe now that it's 2021, people don't think that hearing voices and seeing shadow people is so weird. But oftentimes people are just like, oh, you need an exorcism. There's something wrong with you. So, of course, you know, he's seeing the angel Gabriel and all these different things are happening and he's second guessing himself and she's like uh allah will never humiliate you like she's like like the pep talk of his life there would be no islam right <laughs> i mean i don't like to say if or play in the realm of if but at the same time it's like when he doubted himself she had so much belief in him that he believed in himself so she is quoted as saying you know Allah will never humiliate you you know you're good to orphans you're dutiful to kinfolk you're, you're kind to neighbors you're trustworthy like you're that dude you are full of virtue the whole community calls you al amin and that means the trustworthy so even if tribes were quarreling and he wasn't a part of one or the other they would use him as a mediator because they know that he would be uh impartial unbiased in any case, no one had ever heard a lie from him before, you know? And so she's basically like, do you know who you are? Do you know who you are? Do you know how you are? Like, oh, God is never going to harm you. And, um, and not only did she give him that pep talk, but she backed it up. So days later, she takes him to her blind cousin, uh, Waraka. And this was, you know, a very pious Christian who had all these different um, scriptures memorized. And he basically, because um, you know how it's like uh, the Jews had their thing. I hope I can say that on uh, YouTube. The Hebrews had this thing where it's like, oh, there's another prophet coming and this, 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 this is his description. Right. So after that because you know when when the hebrews went into jesus they were like nah <laughs> nah <laughs> like who's this guy like i don't think so uh we're we're gonna we're still waiting for this person or whatever so basically there are these revelations and these scriptures that were saying oh a prophet will come and he will be like this a prophet will come and he will look like this a prophet will come and he will act like this and these are these are the characteristics he will have and this is the thing these are the type of things that will happen to him so um long time after jesus you know the the, the hebrews or excuse me the israelis because i don't want to say hebrew for obvious reasons um the israelis are actually still waiting for what they believe is their prophet to come right so they deny jesus they deny the prophet muhammad wasalam, but um and i'm not telling you to believe or anything just imagine that i'm giving you like you know just mythology and some wonderful anecdotal thing okay um but basically she followed up that pep talk by taking him to waraka and waraka was just like um obviously blind and so he's quizzing uh the prophet muhammad may the blessings and pieces of peace of allah be upon him pieces whoa <laughs> all the peace all the pieces okay <laughs> but um 
Waraka confirms as a scholar of basically comparative religion, okay? Um, he's just like, you're that guy. Like, like you're the chosen one. And um, he said something like, uh, Waraka said to him, uh, I'm not going to live to see your people betray you. And he's like, you know, he was shocked and he was hurt because he was so sensitive. And he was like, well, they betrayed me. He was like, your people are going to give you up. They're like, basically, they're going to be so vicious. And this is what every prophet had to suffer. And in the Bible, G Jesus says something um, like a prophet is only without glory among his own people. Right. So um, even without the the wisdom in the I mean, imagine, you know, somebody who knows every scripture. Right. Telling you that they read about you before you even knew who you were, uh, that person knew, like, could confirm for you who you are based on their scholarship, right? So let's say a person knows about something else. Let's say it's smallpox or chickenpox, and they're just like, oh, do you have these symptoms? Is this going on? Blah, 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 blah. No, 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 no. You're, you don't fit the diagnostic criteria. You have this symptom, but not that one. Go away. You have three out of five. Go away. You have nine out of 20. Go away. And he's like, yo, you're 20 out of 20. So, Khadija, which is even why this woman has been dead for centuries. This, this is not a mythological character. I said, imagine I'm telling you something about mythology because I know a lot of people are anti-Islamic, right? And I'm not trying to proselytize. I'm just telling you a story about why it's so important to believe in the man that you're with, right? Um... I lost my trail of thought. Come on, chocolate, you can do this. Um, where was I? Maybe I can play this over and figure out where I was. Um, but basically, uh, Khadija, okay, I got it. I got it. So Khadija was a woman who lived centuries ago, right? Uh, she's not a mythological figure. You can literally find people who come from her lineage today who are related to her today, who have her blood running in their veins today, right? Not fake. Um, but obviously, her name is all over the world. Have you noticed? You can meet African-American Khadijas who don't even speak Arabic. Uh, what is that thing? Live in single where Queen Latifah played a Khadija. Um you can find uh, white converts who their community names them Khadija, you know, maybe, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, a lot of African-American converts to Islam get called Khadija. Um, but even when you have born Muslims, you'll find Indonesians and Malaysians who their, their name is Khadija or some version of um, Khadija, Katia. Like it'll, it'll be something that... Um, is a derivative of her name and her name has lived for so long because she did the most important thing like here's the deal she hired him based on his character you know um how do, how do i say this basically the best thing she could have done for him is believe in him so she qualifies as the first Muslim. Some people say it was his best friend, Abu Bakr. And, you know, there's some some difference of opinion there. But basically, Khadija was just like, you know, you want to pray, I'm praying with you. I'm praying right behind you. Like, I, I, I see you out here for what you are. And I believe in you so much. There's nobody in the world that I think of, think more highly of than you. And I'll follow you wherever you go. And she believes so much in him that uh, they went through crazy things. When I say crazy, I mean, it was to a point. I mean, because obviously these are the first generation of Muslims, you know, 1400 or something years ago. So they were a small group of people. Not like small, but a small era. Obviously, they weren't, you know, over a billion people like they are now. Right. But basically, uh, there was a boycott. 
of the Muslim community. You know, people basically just wanted them to die out. And the entire community lived off of her wealth until it was gone. And she died starving. Um, not that she had to starve, but she was being so charitable. That like, And I don't mean like she died like, oh my God, starving, starving. But like she had reached an older age. She'd had children. All these different things happened. But it's like you know, when it comes to rations, right? Because it was to the point where, like, Muslims are eating leaves off of trees. So, literally, in sickness and in health, until death, she believed in him. And um, he married after her. And um, one of his wives was specifically you know jealous of her and her memory and she would like she mocked her one day was like you know i'm i'm better than her what would you want that old woman with her missing teeth anyway he was just like i, I swear by god as a prophet of god who can never lie that you're not better than her and what he said to that wife who loved her with who loved him with every fiber of her being he said to her she believed in me when nobody else did they were calling him uh, a soothsayer and a magician and majnoon like that's crazy in arabic right and he was being humiliated all over his you know like like it was a communal effort of like dragging this guy somebody even like caught his daughter slipping in the streets and like slapped her you know like, just his whole family, like, just being mocked. Um, and, I mean, I'm saying family loosely, right? Because he was an orphan. Um, but that hit him so hard to have so many people against him. And she was just like, I wholesale full faith. So I say this to say this. If you are with some guy who is 38 and has his little hip hop, like he thinks he's going to be a rapper and you don't believe in him. Look, girl, I don't believe in him either, but drop him. Drop him. Leave him. If you can't say to yourself the way Khadija bint Khalid said to herself, the way Melissa said to herself about uh, Kev on stage that I believe in you and I will risk my career, my life, my living, my, my, my comfortability for your, for what, for your dream or what you're trying to establish. Just, just get out of there. There is a scene in uh, the movie about Muhammad Ali. Uh, okay. So that was an Arabic a accent on Muhammad Ali. Um, <laughs> But one of his wives was afraid for him to go fight. Um, where was he going to go fight? She didn't believe he could win. And he walked out of the door and never came back. Men are more sensitive about that than women are. It's their nature. They'll never forget when you did not have faith in them. Oftentimes, we look at the come up woman, right? And we look at the guy, because I know I do this, and I'm just like, oh, F Kevin Hart. You know, he left Tory Hart for, you know, a mixed woman because he's a colorist and he's a this and a that. But we really don't know what happened within those years that they were together. Like, sh I think Tory Hart was very supportive of Kevin, so I'm not trying to say that. But imagine if during that relationship, it was like, you know, why don't you consider something else? You never make it. Haven't you been doing this for so many years? When are you, when are you going to give it up? It's like in the Bible, the wife of Job, um, which this doesn't happen in the, in the Islamic story of Job. Um, so uh, in the Bible, they say Job. In the Quran, they say Ayub. And I'm not even sure what the Torah name for him is, but Ayub and Job, alayhi salam, that, that's good enough. May the pieces, peace, who pieces, may the peace and blessings of God be upon him. But basically, um, in the Bible, 
which is why, I mean, Muslims don't believe in the Bible because they believe that this is a wrong version of the story, right? But in the Bible, she says, you know, like, curse God and die, or what are you going to give up on this God? Look at you, you're sick, you're this, you're that, what's wrong, right? And um, that was wrong. But in... um, the Islamic story, she believes in him so much, she sells her hair like weave, right? So, and she didn't want him to know, right? Because he was the wealthiest man in the land. He had all these children and all these things. And the story goes, you know, devil has a conversation with God and was just like, you know, he only worships you like that because you give him everything. If you touch him with any hardship, he'd betray you. And God was like, I then bet. So he let him and Job literally got sick until uh, flesh fell from his bones. He had maggots. uh, And and that's what both the Bible and the Quran, you know, have similar. Right. Um, But the Islamic story even has like where there were like maggots in his stomach while he was alive, like eating at the flesh, like just funk, funky flesh. Right. And so his wife to take care of him, according to the Islamic story, she um. At first, she shaved half of her head off and then went to the market and sold it, right? Because, you know, she has like this knee length, beautiful hair, you know, this beautiful woman, right? And then she shaved off the other half. And she would just wear a scarf like, man, whatever, he ain't, he ain't go, no, he could barely move. I'm just, I'm just going to keep going. And then like one time he realized, it, he's like, what happened? And she's like, somebody had to take care of you. So for all intents and purposes, you know, this was a, this woman had a luxury lifestyle. And somebody could say, you know, oh, she wouldn't be with you if you didn't have so much. You just came straight out the gate, you know, giving her the world. But I bet you if you took it from her, she wouldn't be down. And she, she went bald. There was something she did say to Joe, but it wasn't disbelief, right? And this is a... Uh, the Bible equates it to disbelief in God, but there's there's a comment she made to him. Like, <sighs> something along the lines of like, I'm tired of this. I'm like exhausted, right? And he was like, if I had my health, he was, he was so mad at her for saying that because basically he was just like, God gave me decades of plenty. Who am I to act up for a few years of hardship? Like after all that God has done for me, what kind of an ingrate would I be? And so he was just like, man, I would lash you a thousand times, man, if (laughs) if I had my health, you know. And um, I mean, husband and wife, sometimes things get thick and things get hard and they say things that they don't really mean. And so an angel came to him when he got his health back and he was just like, man, I'm stuck. And he's like, what's the matter? He was like, I I swore by God's name that I would, you know, lash my, hit my wife a thousand times. And I, I, I can't take God's name in vain. And so the angel was like, you know, tie all these little, you know, like the little weeds you find, like, like corn stalk not corn stock, but like the little skinny wheat looking things. It was like tie a thousand of the mugs together and tap her, man. <laughs> that would, that is acceptable. So that's what happened to basically free him from the oath that he took. Anyhow, the point was she believed in him. The point was Melissa believed in him. The point was Khadija believed in him. All these women have firm faith in their husband. So this is a reason why you should actually be raising the standard of men that you deal with because you know you don't believe in that dusty. You know you don't believe in that hobosexual. You know you don't believe in that crusty, pooky, ray ray type, you know, in and out of jail, super felon. So that relationship is always going to be toxic. It's always going to, and and I'm not trying to center men at all, not a pick me, 
but it's always going to affect him that you don't believe in him or didn't believe in him at some point in time. So in my particular relationship, I follow my partner blindly. Like, I turn off my brain when I'm with him. But I can do that. I've been with a man who put me in a position to nag him. I've been with a man who put me in a position to um, obviously doubt him and not believe in him because, I mean, he wasn't really a man. He was just a grown old boy. And you know that when you're a woman. Maybe you don't know that when you're a little girl. And that's why some of these predators go after little girls because they can dupe them, right? But find yourself a man you believe in. One of the things that (sighs) I've been crying this whole time. So I'm just trying to gather myself so that I can speak. Uh, There's a lot of scandal surrounding, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Coretta Scott King. Um, But what was powerful about her and Martin is that through all of it, she never lost faith in him. And so, of course, when they made the movie about his life, I forget who was, uh, I think, Angela Bassett was playing Coretta and he just uh so the scene has him look at her and was like woman what is the secret of your belief in me you believe more in me than I believe in myself so things could obviously have taken a change if he was married to other than Coretta Scott King um this is part of what you quote unquote bring to the table that is life-changing for a man is that you don't doubt him that you believe him before you believe what he said or she said and not just that you believe him but that you believe in him so we can talk about waist sizes and we can talk about breast sizes and we can talk about leg thigh hip and and buttock sizes and all of that is like not to be invalidated but your faith in him is so important and if you don't have any if if you're just trauma bonded to him or if it's just you guys are very sexually compatible or you think he's really funny or you, but you don't believe in like what his plans are and what he like just go go Find you a person you believe in because you are going to be important to him. And it will increase him in love for you and it will increase him in his attachment to you. You'll know because he'll start bringing you all his ideas and like running them by you and explaining things to you and opening up about things that he doesn't normally talk to talk about to other people. And that's intimacy. So it's it's not penetration of the body, but it's penetration of the mind and the heart and the soul. That's all. I'm not telling you to believe in the man that you're with because he might not be worthy of it. Like, you know, the guy that I was interested in was not worthy of it. But... That's something that is scarcely healed in a relationship. You got kids, you got whatever, you got 20 years of marriage under your belt, but he'll still remember year number nine where you totally disbelieved in him. It could be year number 21 and he can be, you know, my family's so beautiful, my children are so well raised, blah, 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 but he's still going to remember year number nine where you completely doubted him and it's always going to be a scar in his soul. So um, that ruins a relationship. It erodes it. It eats it up from the inside out. So again, I say choose well. Choose a person you can believe in. 
um, believe in a man and watch what he, he's willing to do for you. That's all. Actually, I, no, this is half an hour. I was about to say I can go on and on and on about the virtues of women in uh, Abrahamic faiths and, and their faith. But um, this is half an hour. So I'm up at Unicorn and I'm out of here. Whew.